Hi, I'm Michelle Somberfield, and my soul was Marilyn Monroe's during its last past life. Okay, I'm sitting here, it's Sunday night, and my buddy Catsby, he's right here too. Hi, baby kitty. Da, 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 da. All right. <laughs> he wanted to get really close to me. So anyway, um, yesterday morning, I decided to join a new Facebook site on reincarnation. And I joined one that seems to have a lot of researchers on it. And they had some ground rules. They don't really believe in past life regressions because they believe the best, most clear, honest memories are the ones that spontaneously come to you as opposed to memories you go looking for. They also said that they don't really want you talking about famous past lives because that brings upon a lot of contention and people tend to, I guess, be very opinionated about that, which I do know is true from past experiences on other sites. So, of course, I'm dancing around things a little bit, trying to say different things about my very last past life, but I also have some other lifetimes that weren't famous that I'm very, very interested in. There was one woman on the site who actually said that she thought that famous past lives would be the easiest to document or to find documentation on, I should say, and prove, so it kind of was a shame to exclude them, but okay, so I'm on this new site. So I'm having some great discussions, and then fast forward a day later, today, um, Somebody made a comment on my friend Sherry or Avon's music video. Now, Avon and I had been discussing various things like um, hypnosis for stage fright, having a bad back, you know, different things on her music video. But this other woman who also believes she was Marilyn during her past life chimed in on this music video you know, YouTube site. And I said, well, you know, I, I really wasn't trying to talk about Marilyn on this particular video site, but then she started giving me her opinions about things anyway, because she believed she was Marilyn, and she knew who I was, and she knew who Avon was, because she had had a previous conversation with us in another area. Um, so anyway... This woman was telling me that one of the reasons she will never believe that my soul could have been Marilyn's is because I remember too much. I was like, what? Huh? I mean, that's what I'm thinking inside because I'm always thinking to myself, why don't I remember more about my most previous past life? Like, why don't I remember what kind of toothpaste I used? Why don't I remember what my favorite color is or was? Why don't I remember what kind of car I drove? Why don't I remember more about my husbands and, and being with them or, or whatever, you know? Um, why, do, why don't I remember more than I do? So to have somebody actually tell me that she thought that I couldn't possibly have been Marilyn because I remember too much astounded me. It was like, what? That floored me. She went on to say that she thinks that if a soul reincarnates into another person, another body, that they have, you know, a physically different brain, so they are not capable of remembering a scene at length. They would only be able to remember maybe an impression of something like if you see a picture of JFK, you might feel sad or, or whatever. But she she thinks more in terms of impressions instead of actually remembering full-blown scenes of any kind. So I was like shocked and I thought, all right, well, I, I can't dumb down the way I remember things. I'm not going to pretend I remember things differently than I do. I don't always remember full-blown scenes, um, but sometimes I do. It's just the way it is. Um, I remember two different times during Marilyn's lifetime, I was running, and they were both traumatic events, and I actually do feel like I'm immersed in those scenes. I remember running. I remember the fear. They are highly charged scenes, and I remember the scenes playing out as if a video or something, only I'm actually that person.
Um, I remember multiple times during past lives, various past lives, where I was attacked, you know, by a guy. And I can't say I remember all of them in clear, ongoing action, but there was an incident during Marilyn's lifetime toward, you know, the final year or so of her lifetime, where I do remember it vividly. I remember somebody attacking me, pushing me into the back of a car. So I'm not going to apologize for remembering what I do. I personally always feel like I don't remember enough. And I, I went back to that researcher's Facebook site and I said, I can't believe it. Somebody's actually accusing me of remembering too much. Therefore, I wasn't Marilyn because I remember too much. And they said, well, you know, it's very common to remember things in a series of still pictures. It's not as common to remember things in like a video type ongoing format. But if something's really, you know, monumental to you, really traumatizing to you, you might, you know. And um, that was reassuring, but still I'm not going to change what I say because I remember what I remember and that's just it, you know. I don't feel like I even really have any control over what I remember because I feel like memories tend to come to me when I'm not trying to get them to come to me, and then they don't if I meditate all the time and, and try to pull them out of my past. So anyway, I've been on a couple different sites where people have said, well, you know, a lot of times your mind just tells you what it wants you to know in order to resolve something in the past, but it won't necessarily tell you more because it's trying to protect you, because you have to live in your current lifetime, you don't want to be overwhelmed and too traumatized from the past. So, you know, maybe that's why I only remember certain things. But I'm not going to report things as less than what I do remember, just like I'm not going to overstep and report things that I don't remember. And there's two good examples of things that I don't personally remember. Other people have told me, a couple mediums have told me. Now, I think there's some mediums who just don't really actually see that much. I think they're self-proclaimed mediums and not really gifted. And then there's some that I think are gifted. I've had two different mediums talk about my murder um, and tell me that not only was I smothered with a pillow, but they see a second guy holding my legs down while the first guy had the pillow over my face. Now, I don't report that because I don't remember the second guy holding my legs down. I just remember who the first guy was who put the bedroom pillow over my face. And I remember panicking and being frantic. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, trying to pull the pillow off of my face. I felt like my head was going to explode. And then my consciousness went out the top of my head. But I don't remember somebody else you know, holding my legs down. So I don't report that. It's not in my book. That's just something that two different mediums who did not know each other, who I did not even ask for advice, told me they see. Okay, then there was another medium. I was talking to him and I was asking him questions. I felt this instant connection and trust with him. And I, I was telling him a little bit about Marilyn's death. And I said, you know, one of the things that really stumps me to this day is what happened to my negligee, because I know that two men took it off of me. I was out of body at the time. I saw it happen. I know that. They tossed it aside. Yet I never see it in any of the pictures of Marilyn's room, the crime scene pictures. I never see it anywhere. I said, do you think someone took it as, you know, a souvenir or something of that night? And he said... No, it was burnt because they used it to clean up the black stuff. And he meant the liquid black stuff that came out of me after stuff was injected in me. And he said they had to burn it to get rid of it. Which is interesting because I hypothesize that my journal or my diary was burnt because I do remember being out of body and seeing something in my yard, like the far side of my yard, somewhere in my yard, being burnt but I don't know what it was. So I always assumed it was my journal. I don't really know. Um, but when he said to me out of the blue that my negligee, my white nighty, was burnt because they had used it to wipe something up and then they had to get rid of it, 
I thought that was amazing, and I actually believe him. I can't prove it. I don't have that in my book. I can't claim that I remember it because I don't, but that's what I was told. So the point is, I am not going to dumb down my memories, and I'm also not going to claim memories I don't have. And if I do talk about something, I will make clear, you know, if something came from some other source besides my own mind, my own memories. I'm not going to try to convolute things. I believe the truth is the utmost important thing here. Um, so this is my book called Marilyn, Not Just Another Girl, The Myth About Sleeping in the Nude. And that's all I really wanted to say tonight. I just wanted to talk about a couple of things that have come up online within the last, say, day and a half. That's all. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, here he is. Da 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 da. My little buddy kitty. My little buddy kitty. Da da. <laughs> See, I'm so lucky to have these little kitty cats here. <laughs>